because u y is zero. Right? So that is interesting. That is somehow related with the concept that we learned in vibration. Okay, anti-node. At anti-node, we cannot move it. Anti-node means that the position that is not moving. Okay? So what about the impedance of anti-node? Infinity. Right? So, instead of just saying anti-node, we could say impedance is infinity. Okay, what about the impedance at the... No, no, I'm sorry. In, in the, the nodal point, node. Nodal point is the point where, where, where the, the, the things is not moving, right? So, impedance at nodal point is infinity. What about the impedance at nodal point, anti-node? That means at anti-node, we can move easily, right? So impedance should be getting smaller and smaller, right? Because u, velocity, is getting to be large and large as we move from the nodal point. So that means impedance is suddenly capable to describe what's going on on the medium or what's going on on string. So we can envisage or we can guess that impedance could describe the physical behavior of a string all the way. That's a good possibility. And that, those are related with the characteristics of a string. One of them is tension, and one of them is speed of propagation. That means if I pull string harder and harder, then what's, what, what will happen? Impedance go on. Therefore, using unit force, what will happen? We, will, we might have small velocity. That makes sense. So impedance should, certainly describes the characteristics of a medium. Right? So the, we call this is the characteristic impedance. Okay. Now, let's enjoy what the expression over here implies. Okay, suppose I have a string and I launched this wave over here. And I have fixed string. I have a fixed string. And I have thin string. Okay. If Z1 is very, if Z1 is very small other than Z2, what does it mean? If Z1 is very small compared to Z2, that means Z1 is thinner than Z2, 
Okay, very, very thin. And the mathematical expression says if Z1 is very small compared with Z2, then Z, Z2 has to be zero, no transmission. And Z2 is very large compared to Z1, so what I will get is minus 1. That means the wave go over here and the reflected back and come over here. Because that is minus. And in no way. And what about if Z1 is much, much larger than Z2? I think in that case is very thick compared with this one. So if I send this one, what happens? Z1 is very large. Then I will get the wave going back here. Right? <laughs> And transmitted wave is a Z2 is very small compared with the Z1. I have, I magnified the transmitted wave twice. Do you think that's possible? That violate thermodynamics law, right? I have this, I get this back this way, but I have twice a bigger wave over there. That is not possible. Okay, this we are only talking about the amplitude. Amplitude. But what about the power? What about the power? We have to we have to consider the power Right? Does power really increase by 2? No. The power of H1 has to be H1 multiplied by the velocity of the instant wave. And that is dH, I mean dy dt. If you do that, you will get that is the power transmission is zero. No power. So if you calculate the power transmission coefficient, then you can find out no power is transmitted. In between, what would happen? Some wave transmitted and some wave reflected. In this case, some wave transmitted and some wave uh, uh, reflected and some wave transmitted, depending on the impedance, as you can see in the text. Okay? So that demonstrates that depending on the impedance, transmitted wave and the reflected wave I mean in other words, the impedance of the medium really determines how much wave is transmitted, how much wave is reflected. Oh, that's very interesting. 